it's time now to look at some final renders of the dungeon scene. So I'm going to walk you through some of this, and this is one view, one render of it. I've done some changes uh, to the creature. There's only one big tentacle now, and there's a little baby tentacle here. I textured this in Substance uh, Painter after doing a little bit more modeling, uh, remodeling of the thing. But a lot of this stuff is pretty much unchanged. You can see the walls here, the the ceiling there, and the, all the chains and the gates and and all of this stuff, but it's all textured up now, and it's mostly done in Substance Painter. Um, a couple of things were done in Blender, and a couple of things were left undone. So we'll maybe have a look at some of that. In a previous video, I went through how I created uh, this part of the floor in Substance Designer, and then brought it into Substance Painter, did a little bit of work there, and then brought it into Blender. Uh, some of these are just you know, from obviously slightly different angles, focusing on different things. So here we can see, of course, the uh, the walkway that we did, and I, I showed you how I modeled that, and then how I textured it in the Substance Painter. Got the morgue door here. We talked about the uh, the pattern on the, the inner panel there. Then we got the uh, the bookcases, um, the books, you know, the torches, uh, the metal pieces here. I had a different plan uh, originally. The portal down here, I added these lights. I'm not sure that I really care for them, but uh, it gives it a bit of a more sci-fi look. Well, we did the barrel, the texturing of the barrel. I think that turned out quite uh, quite nice. The bird cage here. Um, yeah, so so there's that, there's that view. Um, I will say just a couple words, a couple of things left undone, uh, but I have to move on. Um, the glass, I really did not focus much on the glass, and in the end, it, I, I didn't uh, do a, a dirty texture on the glass. So that, that stands out a little bit frustrating for me, but let's, uh, let's move on and look at a couple of other views, just to show from different angles the different things, in case I didn't see them in the, the, uh, the reptile skin. I had intended to do a different brick wall. And I just I just started running out of time, and I, I do have uh, some client stuff, and I have uh, a lot of requests, and I have a lot of plans, and uh, I I as much as I have thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this scene, and I'm planning to do another either dungeon or temple scene, um, I I have to let this one go. So the person who requested it, I hope you're happy with the final result. Um, thank you for suggesting it and thank you for coming by everybody and that person as well yeah I really enjoyed that now but with respect to the wall I had intended to do something slightly different um, I'm going to show you just really quickly in substance designer uh, what what this uh, entailed to get uh, this and I've changed the colors a little bit and just made them flatter uh, just because what was playing around but this is uh, this is how it looks in substance designer and I framed this stuff up so that you could see it a little bit better. You know, I started with this square brick, brought it into a tile sampler. And uh, there's a couple of things here. The height variation. By using this flood fill and flood fill to gradient, I get the different um, sort of angles of the, of the bricks. They're not overly uh, visible here because I toned it down a little bit. But that gives me the height variation. And then to get some of the edge damage, you can't see it too well, but these aren't perfectly straight. They sort of curve in a little bit here and there. That's that's this stuff here. And we'll do a, a video on making this kind of stuff soon, so I have something else to show you as well. And uh, then the, these this is a very stylized brick wall. The, the little holes here are caused by this right here, right above there, the holes there. All right, we've got a shape, and we, we bring in some noise and a, a slope blur. And I've got a couple of them here, actually. And then I tile them and mix them back in. And then the the, uh, the sort of nicks out of you know this line and that thing, these indentations that are typical of these stylized uh, bricks, and they're kind of uh, exaggerated here in my graph. Anyhow, is this stuff right here. All right, and then um, the, for the, the colors, um, I had really had this in, uh, in sort of brown tones and with a little bit more variation in color. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that it's brown because I've done some post-processing on this, but that would be all up in here. All right, I've, I've toned it down to a more gray color because I wanted to just do a little experiment with that at some point. 
on my own but that's basically the graph and then and then the outputs okay i've got some color i've got a normal i've got roughness i've got height and i've got ambient occlusion so we will do some videos about this kind of stuff it's very typical substance designer stuff but it takes a while to uh learn how to do it the other thing i wanted to show you is uh we're going to be doing something like this this is very similar but more of a um like a cobblestone um, path or something like that but i could change this into bricks and we would have all the same basic things from the the edgeware on the sides and the and those the, the the damage on the surface and the cracks and the holes and stuff like that they're done a little bit differently that could be converted into a wall potentially these were bricks and offset or it could be a tile wall you know in a temple something along that line and my plan is going to be to do a video on this and uh, try to use it in a project so that we're not left with just one you know a static image on a rounded cylinder or on a high a high-res plane from substance designer and then what to do next like a lot of people that are using sub substance designer and doing stuff like this would know what to do next um, but for those of you or us the, who don't and who would like to see the material in action um, granted I don't necessarily want to make a huge scene but I would like to have some kind of a scene where we would take it from substance designer and we would bring it into substance painter most likely you don't have to you could just take the outputs here you could just take these the uh, the, the diffuse let's say the base color the normal the roughness the height the ambient occlusion and you could just plug it in in blender like you would do with you know image textures that you typically <laughs> you know probably used on uh, uh, houses medieval houses and rocks and stuff like that so you, you could do it that way and all you would have to do really is come up here and go export outputs as bitmaps and you would get those images and you could plug them in in the uh, in the shader editor but you could also take this either the the textures themselves alone or you could convert this right here you could publish this as an sbsar file for substance painter or you could just use the textures in substance painter and then do other things add other cracks add dirt scratches if you wanted you know blood splatters and it would still be tileable and the idea pretty much is that uh, this texture or this is a, a 2k or a 1024 or 1k uh, flat image it's a plane and then you know you could uh, you, you just put it on a plane uh, it you still could make a, a 3d like looking thing like for example I'm planning on doing a temple pillar you know those typical sort of Roman or Greek pillars um, you you might think that you would need blender geometry a cylinder and you could do it that way you could have the base cylinder and the top and then you could just wrap this this image something like this let's say you know you could wrap that on or you could just have this on a plane you know and and just from a distance a little bit um like you would see in a computer game you know chances are it's going to be an image not necessarily the 3d model uh, so we could do a few different things but i would like to take it in other words from substance designer potentially to painter and then into blender and maybe make a little temple or part of it or at least a wall or a couple wall sections and a couple of props in there so you could see that yeah i could make this material and i then i could use it i would like to do that because admittedly my stuff is not going to be um very advanced i'm doing this for really uh, early on users of substance designer like myself like i used to always say about blender all right so that's uh that's what's coming up in the next little while so we've got the the dungeon scene finished and we're we've integrated substance designer and substance painter in the floor and in the wall i'm happy with how it turned out i'm very happy and i'm very excited about the the potential for the future uh using that we could do wood in that we could do walls we could do floors we could do all kinds of objects barrels um you know and of course we could do this the the, you know, the creature skin i did play around in blender for a while and i just wasn't happy and then I, I went into into uh substance painter and 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 did it there and i'm much happier with the uh 
with the texture of the skin and, and, and how it all turned out than I was in Blender. That's not to say that you could not do it in Blender. I mean, there are some really nice lizard skin or alligator skin videos about how to do it in Blender and they look quite nice, but it's, it's a different situation using Blender versus using Substance Painter for texturing. We cannot forget the lighting that that and and you know I am not very good at it I just spend a lot of time on it until I'm I'm pretty happy and I'm not fully satisfied uh, with any of it but it's getting better than it was and that's always going to be the way it is right I mean you're not gonna stay stagnant you and you're not gonna start out with things looking fantastic I'm trying to think along the lines of it's, it should have um, a reason for being where it is. I may have lights here and there that don't make sense, that don't seem to come from anywhere. You know, you can always say, oh, well, there's a skylight there, or there's a window that you just don't see, and, and that's okay. And sometimes it doesn't matter. I mean, the blue lights that are in the back of these, I mean, this one looks pretty cool, that looks pretty cool. It seems like there might be uh, some moonlighting behind there, but obviously here you don't see any. So, I mean, you know, the more thought you put into it, and the more you work with lighting, the better you'll get. And without good lighting, just shut the lights off. Nothing matters. You can't see your model. You can't see the textures because it's black. There's no lights. You start introducing lights and then it matters what color they are, how bright they are, whether or not they cast shadows, where they're positioned, whether there's backlighting. I mean, I went out of my way to, to do some backlighting here. Uh, I don't know how well it, it worked, but you know, anyways, you know, we get better at these things the more we do them, but there is a lot of stuff to do. It starts with the modeling, and then, you know, you've got the texturing, and the textures need the light, of course, right? And so, sometimes people um, do the modeling, and then they throw in lights, and, and they get frustrated, and it's not looking good. Well, of course, because there's no materials to uh, absorb the light, reflect the light, to look good in the light or they do the textures and at first they're frustrated because they don't really have good lighting and so it's it's a i don't know if it's a double-edged sword or a triple-edged sword it really all goes together the modeling the lighting the textures and i'm sure there's probably a couple of other things the composition of course the things that i'm missing but it takes time to get good at all of them and i'm not saying that i'm good at really any of them i'm just doing what i'm doing and i'm glad to have you here along along with me on the journey let's try to get better at least not good let's just try to get better together all right anyways thanks for joining me along the way and please subscribe to the channel like the videos and keep coming by take care